Hello, hello. How are we doing today? I'm doing so good. Thank you for asking. I hope you're doing well too. Well, the modern RC happened. We're back. We're here. And guess who won the whole thing? Not me. <laughs> Not me. But had a great time going to Denver with all my friends competing in the modern RC. I thought it was very fun. I loved it. Had a great time. And I wanted to give a rundown of my tournament run. I thought it'd be fun to go over, you know, all the games that I played. And if I made any mistakes or maybe if I if I thought I could play better at certain places. But at uh, the end of the day, I went 9-5. and five. So I made day 2. I went, I finished the day X and 3. And then I went to day 2. And then I ended 9-5. and five. But I don't, I don't want to spoil anything just yet. I want to go through the matches and everything. And I want to, we'll just walk through it. You know, we'll walk through it together. Um, and then I do have a little bit of a... I, have a, I want to say something at the very end of the video, so stick around for that. I don't want to say it right now. I'm going to go through everything, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it at the end, okay? So, what do we got here? Well, this is Lotus Estimated. I posted this online. I was just doing, I was showing this on Twitch. I put on, I did not put it on Twitter, though. No. But I, I, I showed people, this is what the list I was running. I put a sideboard guide out. Uh, I guess I did, because, uh, like, the sideboard guide had my deck list, but not, you know, you had to read it. So, not nah, people don't do that nowadays. <laughs> but anyway, um... This is the list I was running. Uh, I can show here for a more visual view. Um, had the one Dried Arbor, had the one Underground Mortuary as the, the lands, Pendlehaven. Uh, everything's pretty much stock. The one of us being Gilded Goose as the Mana Dork, the Haywire Mite, of course, coming in clutch. It did, it did, it, hey, it did matter. It did, okay. You're, I'm, I'm going to go through that. We got the four Orcish Bowmaster. Zulaport also mattered, okay. Let me get there. And then we had the four Wall of Roots, the one String of Rootgeist, Hotra, the Queen, and of course... She mattered too. And we have the Endurance with four Grist, uh, four uh, Yawgmoth, one Shieldra, then Court Calling. And sideboard over here, we got the two of everything, you know, the full house here. We have the two Thoughtseize, two Fatal Push, two Chalice, two Fulminator, two Force, two Endurance. Then one Rex Sage, one Jailer, one Legion's End. So this is what I settled on for the tournament. Uh, I did expect there to be a lot of Rhinos. And I, I don't, I don't want to say I called it. But leading up to the week of the RC... I was kind of, I was playing some games, I was playtesting with my friends and my team, and I was thinking, I was looking at the other results as they were happening in, in, around the world, and I was thinking, huh, creativity and living end are kind of really good right now in this meta with Rhinos and with the Ogmoth being at the top and Amulet and Murktide and all that. Um, I was, so I'm like, I think they're going to make a comeback. And some people, some Yogmoth players, hey, you know who you are, uh, it's okay. So no, there's no problem, but they were saying, oh, we should be cutting endurances, but we should go down to two endurances. We should take endurance out of the main board. Uh, I don't think that was necessarily correct. Uh, I think not respecting graveyard decks at all uh, is not something I want to be doing. I think endurance is a great standalone one of uh, as it is to just fit in the deck regardless. Uh, and I expected Living End to be popular at the RC, which it, it did see a surge uh, in popularity. I mean, it almost won the whole thing, almost won the whole thing. So I kept Endurance on the main board for that. I wanted the full three Endurance uh, just for that. Uh, and I did run into Living End, but, which we'll get to in a moment. But yeah, this is the list that I ran for the tournament. Felt great. Uh, something came up later on. I guess, I guess we can talk about it now because it was technically before the tournament. But before the tournament, the day of, after you, everyone submitted their deck list, of course, you got, the little, you got the little deck lists creeping out of the corners, being like, oh, oh, where are my cards? Where are my cards? You got the little deck. Oh, oh, new deck coming up. New deck. No one ever heard about it. Well, people did hear about it. There, there was the, 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 if you don't know what I'm talking about, the ley line of the Guild Pact. The new ley line. We can type it in here. Here we go. Uh, this one right here. So, makes everything all colors. Each non-land permanent is, uh, that they control is all colors. And lands are every basic land type in addition to their other types. So this was being abused in the domain decks. So Domain Zoo was putting this in their deck and they were just basically doing the same play patterns as Scam. You know, just have this in your hand turn one and then turn two, you play Sino Draco and then the game's over. <laughs> if, they can't, if they can't answer the enchantment, the game, the game is over. So uh, because Sign of Draco, if it's all colors, it gives itself all the five keywords. So it gives Hexproof, Lifelink, First Strike, Trample, Vigilance. Yeah, so 4-4 four, four flyer for two with five keywords is uh, not easy to beat, especially when one of them is hexproof. So that deck came up, 
uh, out of nowhere. Also, it was like a, a crazy Rhinos build, which I don't even want to look at. I don't even want to look at that. All right. Uh, I didn't face against the Rhinos one, but I did face against this one. But we'll get to that right now. So let me go through my matchups here. I just brought up the melee, which is where I ha it has all the information about my matchups and everything. So we'll just go through the day. We'll just I'll take you through my day. I'll take you through the matches as much as I can remember off the top of my head, and I think it'll be fun. So let's start. Let's start off with number one. So I'm gonna scroll from the bottom here. I don't want to spoil the next one, so I'll, I'll I'll do it like bit by bit. So the bottom the bottom right here. You guys can see that you can't because there's a gorilla okay oh there's kurt ape hello kurt ape. anyway okay uh it's actually better cool so yeah all right awesome that gets scroll down cool <laughs> so first one was azorius control with kahira as soon as my <laughs> to be honest okay so everyone's got the, the first game nerves coming up right everyone's everyone's sitting down you had a you had conversations at the table and everything right and then you, you go for your first match and you got the, the pre-game nerves you're like oh okay first match here we go my opponent shows me Kahira. Oh. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I did feel a lot more confident after my opponent revealed Kahira. Because um, blue, I, I assumed it was a blue white. I saw the deck list. It's open deck list, right? So we, we know what we're playing before we get into the game. Um, saw it was Kahira, blue white. Felt really confident going in there. Uh, so I, I won the one, that match 2 0. Um, I was able to, I, ha I started with Halfling in hand. I went to a turn two wrist. Rest is history. It's just <laughs> is so good. Uh, there was also an instance where I was a little bit down on board. My opponent goes to play one ring and they try to tap it and draw immediately. And I already have a very good board state. I have like a, a grist. I have like a bunch of insects just beaten down. He has no creatures or they have no creatures. And they resolve a ring. I think they only have one or two cards in hand after that. And they, they tapped out or they only have one mana. And I'm like, I'm just going to court. I know they don't have spell pierce in the board or in the main in their in their board at all. I'm, I'm gonna court. Uh, court resolves. Get the haywire might. Boom. No drop. Nah. -uh. You thought you were gonna drop? Uh uh uh. No no. <laughs> so uh, exile that, and then from there out, they they would just never they were never able to they, they were never they were never able to draw out of it. So yeah, from there I was able to get that game. Got a 2-0. Felt great. Felt awesome. All right, and then going into the second game, rhinos. The complete opposite of what I fell in round one. So I uh, did not feel the best. I mean, it's the worst matchup uh, for our deck by far. Uh, and the room had, if you didn't see the infographic online, the room had 21%, oh, close to 22% of the whole field was Rhinos. So a pretty high chance of, of sitting across the table from a Rhinos player, and I got in round two. All good. Uh, so this game was interesting. Um, I ended up losing this game. However, in game... One, they got it. In game two, I got it. I, I'm, I took it back because I was able to just, I was able to have enough hate pieces with the Jailer and with the uh, the Chalice to stall out to get Yawgmoth on the field. And then from there, I was able to control their board enough to just to squeeze out a win. So from that, that was good. My mistake, I think, from this, for this game was in game three. So game three, my opening hand, I have two walls. I have two birds. Or, well, I have one guilt, one goose, one hierarch. I have Hapatra, I have Chalice, I have a land. Now, that's a one lander. I'm on the draw. I'm against Rhinos. Not the best. However, we do have Chalice. We do have two walls. We do have two one drops. We do have Hapatra. My thinking is, if I can draw into a second land here, this is already really good. I would keep it. If I, this hand had two lands, I would keep this hand. We just have to draw... One of the 12 spells that we need off the top, that 12 spells being four Yawgmoth, four Quarter Calling, four Grist. Uh, Cauldron is also good. So, um, But I side, I side down to Grist. So, and, anyways, we have a lot of good draws off the top. If we draw into Yawgmoth, this hand is insane, right? So I would keep the hand on the strength of the, of the Chalice, hoping to get there. And they play, they play Fetch Lango. I play Land Bird. That I pass turn, they Fetch. I'm like, don't do it. And they get the surveil land. So I'm like, oh, great. Awesome. Okay, so they don't kill the bird. I believe the bird survives. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I believe the bird survives. Uh, and then I draw and I don't get a land. I've drawn to... I, th I think i drawn to another... I think i drawn to a cauldron. Or i drawn to another halfling. I forget which one it was. I'm pretty sure it was one of those two. So then I'm just like trying... So I'm, I, I think that the dork does live because I do play out my hand from there. I play out the wall of roots. I, I'm forced to down tick here because... My hand is very sparse in terms of land drop, so I want to like just try to accelerate 
in case I draw a cord off the top or draw something relevant like a Yawgmoth. So I play out the, the other wall, I play out the, the halflings, and then I pass turn. My opponent goes, land drop, go again. So I'm like, okay, okay, I, I untap. I think I draw a, a land at that point. So I play the land and I play out Hapatra, and I'm like just swinging in for one. But well, I don't swing in for one because they have three mana, so I'm, I'm just chilling. They fetch, and they still don't do anything, and then they go to, the, to their turn because I have the Chalice in play. And then they draw, and then they Brotherhood's End. I'm like, okay, well, this isn't very good. I think I, I do have a Young Wolf. I drew into a Young Wolf uh, that I remember because I, I had that remaining in at one wall. Uh, and then, so I'll, all my Halflings are gone. The Patra's gone, unfortunately. Could have saved her in my hand, but I wanted I needed to have her on the board for a cord if I had ever drew into another land, so that's why I played her out. Um, then I drew the cord right after the Brotherhood's End. It's like, ah, oh, damn it. But it was like, okay, I got a cord. I, I have a cord. I have a wall of roots. I have two lands and a young wolf. Okay, we're, 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 we can make it. We can still do this. Um, and then they draw again, and they draw into another brother, Brotherhood's End. So I still have a wall, but I no longer have young wolf because the young wolf died and came back. So from there, it was it was very hard to come back from that position, but I actually almost did. I, I eventually drew, I think I drew land, land, Yawgmoth. And I courted for, I think I courted for something relevant to either stop them or to like ping. I think it may be a Bowmasters. Um, I think I drew into a Grist eventually as well and played that out. However, so I was, I got into a position where I'm at two life. They're at, they're still at a high life total. And they have Tidebinder, Tidebinder. Uh, they turned off my Yawgmoth. So they have a Tidebinder on the field, second Tidebinder, because they had two. I went to like stop one and they had another one. And then they have a, a Rhino on one. And then they have a, like a, a sorry, a rhino with that's just a one one because I shrunk it, so it's just has three negative counters on it. And then they have a sharpness agent, and I have a yogmoth, a wall, and a halfling. I think those are the three the creatures I have. So I'm at two. They swing. They go. They go to their turn. They think for a little bit, and I have a cord in my hand. I don't think I. I think I just have a cord and like a backup yogmoth. I think. Uh, and they go They go to their turn. They, before combat, flame the Yawgmoth. And so I'm just like, mm, okay. So I'm thinking here. They, well, they flame, but they do, they they choose, do, deal five the Yawgmoth and then draw two. And because they have the Tide Binder in play. So I'm like, okay, thinking. I'm like, oh, I can get Bowmaster here. If I, and if Bowmaster sticks here, then I can just, I can come back. Because then I'll play the Yawgmoth the following turn. And I'll still have the Grist alive. So, uh... They core, I they do that. I core for two in response because what I could do is if the bowmaster resolves, I ping the the rhino token, kills it, and then they draw two, and then I ping one of the tide binders twice, and now suddenly I have a three three blocker, and I have another chump blocker, and hopefully if they didn't draw anything, then I'm I'm good. So I core for bowmasters. They think, They're like okay, it's good, and then I get the bowmaster. I'm like bowmaster. Is it good? And then they think, 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 and then tied biter number three. I'm like, oh, dang. So, yeah, that was that was pretty rough. Uh, uh, th three tied binders to a brotherhood's end was hard to fight through. But the hand I kept was a little bit suspicious. I mean, I, I could have definitely mulled to six and tried to have had something better, maybe like a fast yog moth or more, just like a well, I mean, more lands, right? But I think I thought that hand was fine to keep. But again, hindsight, like maybe it's 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 definitely reasonable for to mold that hand. So that was my first loss. So it's like, okay, shake it off. All good. We're still good, baby. Then going to the next game, I play against. Yeah, okay. Then going to the third game, I play against uh, the mirror match. Uh, the mirror match was interesting because they were on a list that had twenty five lands, four colony garden, no insidious roots, but they had arboreal grazer in the list. And I'm like, okay. That's interesting. This used to be a list. They had three Viseju, um, four Colony Garden, I think two of the Bounce Land, the Rot Farm. Um, and I'm like, okay, this is this is interesting. So I've never played. I've never played against that version actually. So in game one, uh, I think I get the first one, and then go to, going to game two, uh, they get the, sec the second one. I'm saying this very like nonchalantly because it's like I got the Yawgmoth first, and then I was able to like kill their resources and grind them out of the game oh wait what happened in the first game actually is they had a grist they kept a hand on the strength of grist and i kept a hand on the strength of cauldron and they i play the cauldron on ter my turn two and they play the grist and then they, they just keep plusing because they have to right you can't be scared of a cauldron if you have a grist 
And then they mill over a grist. And I'm like, oh, oh, thank you very much. And they don't have a culture. <laughs> so I do, I take their grist. And then I, I plus, and I mill over a Yogmoth, and I'm, and the, and the guy's like, oh, well. <laughs> so that was pretty funny, uh, unfortunate for that, but I, I got game one. Game two, it came down to them getting the Yogmoth before I could, and they were controlling my board. They, I think they drew like two or three Bowmasters, and that was like hard for me when I stuck my Yogmoth. And they got to a point where they were just directly pinging me with the Bowmaster triggers, and then they eventually got a Blood Artist and like made my health, health go down so low to where I couldn't do anything like reasonable because they, they were drawing so many cards and I was trying to draw, but I had no, I had like almost nothing to sack compared to what they had. Um, they missed like, they missed like seven Bowmaster triggers though. <laughs> I was, I was completely, <laughs> I was completely dead, uh, but they missed like seven Bowmaster triggers because the, the stack was getting so complicated. It was like, okay, I'll activate Yogmoth. Okay, Blood Artist trigger. Okay, I'll activate my Yogmoth. Okay, Blood Artist trigger. Okay, uh, Bowmaster trigger. Uh, but that, they missed Bowmaster, Bowmaster trigger. So, uh, they lost this game two, but then game three, I was just able to have a, I had a fast Yogg on a turn that they tapped out, and I drew into the Young Wolf, played the Young Wolf, I sacked the Young Wolf to draw a card, drew into another Young Wolf, played the other Young Wolf, drew another card, and I drew into the Court Calling, and I'm like, oh, oh well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to just kill them there before they untap, because I believe they had a Yogg in play, but they had no, they had nothing to sack, so I'm like, if I, I don't want to let them untap there, so I just got the, I got the kill there. We take those. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to kill a fellow Yogg player, but got to do it sometimes. And then round four, uh, living end. I died very fast. It was not. It was not pretty. So in game one, I my hand. This is interesting though. I do want to talk about this. So I in game one I rolled a five. In game two I kept a reasonable hand with like an endurance and a chalice or an endurance and a jailer, but they. Uh, we were just able to answer everything and I I drew only lands after like the first couple of turns So I, I really didn't draw into anything unfortunately, but the thing I was considering was my opening hand in game one. So I Thought back on this multiple times my opening hand in game one versus living end. I'm on the draw. I had four lands I believe one of them was a fetch land. So that's relevant because of the surveil land. I had four lands. I had Two grists and one yog moth now, if I'm already, when I was playing the game, I was thinking if, if this hand had any one drop, any two drop, I would snap keep this hand on the draw. Why? You go draw, they play the land for turn, you draw a card, I would like to go to discard, Yagma Graveyard. Now, the reason why I didn't do that is because if I didn't draw into a one drop or a creature soon, then it would make my hand very, very slow because I'd be intentionally missing a land drop so I couldn't play Grist even in time on turn three when they're on the play, right? So I could have, I mean, this is this is too crazy, but I, I could have like gone to discard a second time and discarded the second Grist, but I think that, that was that would be way too long. You, you're out of the game at that point. But there is, uh, there is some merit to thinking about like, okay, like I could, if I do draw into a Young Wolf there or any one or like a, a Mana Dork or a Wall of Roots there, then that, that's actually, I think, a reasonable play to do. I think it's on the draw against Living End game one, just discard the yog moth to hand size there we go and now it makes their living end very awkward they have to they have to really build up a living end they can't just do it on on turn three really so that was the interesting decision point to make there but again in game two of multi five and then game three i didn't really draw anything to answer what they were doing so it's all good uh i was two and two at this point so i'm like okay come on we gotta we gotta pick up the pace we gotta we gotta keep going from here so next game played against rhinos again I'm like, God damn it! Stop giving me these cascade decks. Come on, give me, give me something else. Give me a mid range deck. Give me scam. Give me Titan, please. And no, but I got another another Rhinos deck. This one though, I managed to get. I did manage to beat this the Rhinos player. Uh, in game one, I think I got it. Yes, I got. I was able to get game one. I don't exactly remember how. To be honest, I think I was. No, I was able to stick a Yogmoth early, and then from there. They just weren't able to kill it. I think I may have I may have gotten it back with a cauldron. I basically I just played the Ogmoth early and then I was able to control their board. And the queen, the queen did come out. They killed it like as soon as she hit the battlefield. But I was able to kill one of their rhinos or both their rhinos. And I just drew so many cards that they conceded the game there. Game two, uh, they had the nuts. They had the violent outburst and the shardless agent on like turn three or four. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's go next game. Uh, and then in game 
three. It was very close. It was good back and forth on both sides. I was down on board, and I have a court in my hand. I have a land drop for turn, but it's Dryad Arbor. But I have a Pendlehaven in play. So, I'm like, I need to play this Dryad Arbor, because then next turn, I'll be able to court for a Yawgmoth. Because I think I, I the math added up. I think I had another creature to play, and I had a Wall of Roots, so then I played that for one, and then untap on their turn, right? So, I play out the... The Pendlehaven, knowing I play out the the Dread Arbor, knowing it's like this might just die instantly, but I have the Pendlehaven, like so maybe they don't see it, and so then end of their turn they go, okay, I'm gonna dead the the uh, Dread Arbor. And I'm like, oh, uh, Pendlehaven, and they're like, oh shit, <laughs> so I got him. Hey, Pendlehaven, Pendlehaven was able to save the Dread Arbor, and then they didn't have a removal spell for it the following turn, and I don't think they did anything the following turn. So then I drew, I played. Uh, the land, and then I was able to court for Yawgmoth on their turn, and then from there, oh, I was able to close out the game somehow. But it was very close. Um, but managed to get there. We do take those. We do take those. Dried Arbor. Thank you very much. Um, so then after that game, I got that game, and then unfortunately for my round six, I face, I go into my teammate, Eli, and he is on Yawgmoth. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you here. My hand was disgusting. My um, both of my hand, I got it this in two games. Both of my hands were very very gross. I'm sorry if you're watching this, Eli. <laughs> it was, it was disgusting. I had the turn two grist into the turn three Yogmoth uh, with the cauldron in game one. I take out his grist. I eat the grist. I put it under the the cauldron. It, I'm sorry. And then game two, he molds to six. I have another insane hand. A fast Yogmoth, fast grist. I'm sorry. It was not. I didn't want to do it. You hate to match into your friends, your teammates when you're at these big events. It happens sometimes, and I doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good to do, but unfortunately, I had to take him out. Keep going. So got the win there, and then round seven, uh, mono blue Tron. I was not prepared for this one. <laughs> uh, I I don't think you expect to see mono blue Tron at this type of event, but I I matched into like the the second or the 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 what, how many? There was like three or two, uh, something like that. There was there was a very small amount of mono blue tron players as there usually is right uh so i matched this this person uh i get it in two uh and i got a spicy lion oh boy okay so in game one you know it's very hard for us to interact versus tron in game one so i'm looking for hands that have a fast yogmoth a fast court of calling uh a Baseju, potentially um and i think i keep i keep a hand with a fast yogmoth and i have i think i draw into a Baseju. so I play, I the, they play the one ring, or no, I'm sorry, they, they get Tron on their turn, I forget if this is turn three or four, It's tr this is blue Tron, so if you don't know blue Tron, they, uh, they usually delay Tron by a few turns, they, they don't go for it for uh, like how aggressively, like how mono, mono green Tron does, um, because they, they play like a more controlling game, they play island, they want, they want to counterspell your stuff or reband it back to your hand to draw their card. Uh, so they don't usually get Tron right away. It usually takes some time, usually. Uh, but sometimes they just also have it. So in game, so in that first game, I think I'm able to get Yogg and like other stuff into play first before they can get Tron online. But they get Tron online, they play Karn, they down tick, they get O-Stone, and they play the O-Stone. So I go to my turn, and I'm like, damn, I need to get, I need to like find an answer right now. <laughs> I need to end the game right now. So... Uh, I go. I draw for turn. I have two quarter callings in my hand, so I'm like, I'm feeling good. Like I, I'm like, okay, I think I can win on this turn. So I play my land for turn, and I try to court. I think they only have three cards in hand or four cards in hand, and they have the force. They force pitch something else. I'm like, okay, it's okay. I still have another force, so I I have another cord. So I sack my young wolf to like reset the the untap to get more mana for the the second cord. I court again, and that one resolves. So I get a potro. And I'm thinking, okay, if I can draw into another cord here, then I can win. It's not likely. I already used two of my cords. So I'm like, well, it's not likely, but I think I have to go for it anyways. So I'm like sacking my stuff. I'm trying, my, making snakes, drawing cards, drawing cards. And I draw into the Zula port. So I'm like, oh, no. Okay. So I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I drew a, I drew uh, um, the, the second Besage you. So I can just Besage you the O-Stone here. But I already played my land drop. I forgot. I forgot after after drawing so many cards, I forgot that I'd already played my land for turn at the very beginning. So I play a land and I'm like, oh shoot. Like he he realizes I'm like, oh shoot, okay, I might bad, my bad. So I 
I'm like, oh shoot, well, like that changes my whole plan. I'm like, well, shoot, this isn't this isn't gonna work. So uh, unfortunately, a past turn, I I put myself at like six or five trying to dig for the cord, um, and then they go to their turn, uh, they pop the O stone, and I have the mana from Wall of Roots. I can't. The reason why I can't kill the O stone on their turn is because obviously they can just activate in response. So I did have the Sage you technically on their turn with Wall of Roots mana, but not on my turn because I already used all the mana that I could. So they crack the o they draw a card, crack the O stone, and in response I crack the tower, and then they I take them off of Kron. So whole board wipe the whole board is wiped. I think I just have like a young wolf or maybe one or two young wolves. So I'm like, okay, beat down time. Here we go. Hey, turn sideways. Uh, and I'm like beating them down, but then they draw into another Karn, and I'm at four, and they down tick and they get walking ballista. They have six lands in play. I, th I think I put myself to three, actually. No, I, I did put myself to three. I don't know how. I forgot. I think I, I think it was at the end. I was drawing cards, just trying to find something. So I, I would put myself to three. I'm like, okay, well, this is not good. So uh, I'm going to combat. I'm swinging. And then they, they put the Ballista in hand. And I have a Zula port in play. And I did draw into the third court. So I'm thinking on my turn, I'm like, okay. They just have the one card in hand, which is the Walking Ballista. They don't have anything else. I'm at, I'm at three. They have six lines in play. I'm like, okay, I'm going to swing with these two. Like I, I, before I swing with, I, I was swinging with everyone. So this was a little, a little suspicious, right? So uh, they take the damage and they go to their turn and then they think for a little bit and then they tap out for the Ballista. And I, I, I'm, I did a little bit, I did a little, bit, a little bit of a mind game. Okay. So after I pass the turn, I put my hand down. I put my hand, it's down on the table. I'm sitting there like this. Okay, pass turn. Uh, and they go their turn, they draw, they and then they think for a little bit, and they play the Ballista. I'm like, okay, yeah, you got it. And they're like, thinking, thinking, thinking. I think they were thinking if they wanted to pass it back to me and respond after I did, but I, they didn't want to give me the window to, to do something. So immediately they're like, okay, ping you for one. I'm like, yeah, ping you for two. Yeah. All right, ping, uh, ping you for three. And then the walking Ballista goes to the graveyard. And I'm like, response. Ah, quarter caller. I court for two. I get a Bowmaster, ping itself, okay, so we get the token, and then gain one life from the Zula port. Boom, I stay at one, but we're still living. And then uh, he's like, oh, shoot, okay, so then it goes back to my turn. Trigger root Geist off the top, baby. Oh, get in there. Boom, got the win. Okay, got the first one. Very nice, very nice. Okay, and then second game, I fulminated them out of the game. <laughs> uh, I, the second game, it was... Not as close as the first. I was able to... What was it? I don't remember exactly the early game, but I know I, later on, I was able to get a Fulminator Mage under a Cauldron, and I was just able to... Okay, get, I'll get that land. Okay, I'll get that land. Okay, get that land. And to the point where they couldn't... They didn't have anything anymore, and they, they, they conceded. So, got him with the Fulminator Mage. Felt good about that. So, at this point... What? I am... Oh no! At this okay, at this point I'm five and two, so I'm I'm feeling good. I'm like okay, we're still we're still doing good. Just gotta close it out. We just got two more for this first day, and then we're we're good. We're good to go. And then in round number eight, my voice is a little bit um, I was doing a lot of screaming at the at the event, so my voice is that's why my voice is a little uh, deeper. We got the got the baritone. So, um, in round number eight, I play against the Domain Zoo deck. And that's at the beginning of the video, I was talking about the guild pack card. That's what this deck was. So I was hoping to dodge this deck because I felt like, in theory, this is going to be very hard for me to win. And my theory was correct. Yes, <laughs> I lost this game 1-2. I got one game, but man, this was, it was, it's just so hard for us to beat Leyline plus Scion. If we let them untap with that, is the game is over because they have Stubborn Denial, they have Tashana's Tidebinder, they have Reprieves, and... Oh, it's just it's just gross. So in game one, they kept seven, and I'm like, oh, this is not good. I think I mold a, I mold a six or five in game one, trying to find like just a good hand. Uh, first hand was way too slow. Second hand, I believe, had no lands or just had like a bunch of do nothing uh, cards. And then I had to keep a I had to keep a mediocre five. They get game. They had the they go turn one light, ley line or they go turn zero ley line. Uh, pre game effects. I'm like, oh, please don't be gentle. <laughs> and then they go turn two scion. Uh, and then they just beat me down in the air with the Scion over time. And then they tribal, fl they tribal flames me. Uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, there you got it. So then game two, uh, do some sideboarding. I, I bring in like all the fatal pushes. I bring in all of the artifact removal and enchantment removal to try to get rid of the ley line. Uh, and then game two starts. 
they don't have a pregame effect. I'm like, okay. I think they mold a six or mold a five. Uh, and then they have, they have no pregame effect. So I'm like, okay, this is what we gotta, this is what we gotta do. We gotta get lucky because the deck, do, it can be wonky. Their deck can be wonky with, you know, the ley lines and either like not drawing it or they like try to mold to it and they get worse hand. So that's what happened in game two. We, we played a fair game, but I was able to get there versus Zoo. Still was pretty close. I mean, Zoo has, has been a, like a rough matchup for us, even without the ley lines. Um, so it's still pretty a close game too, even though they were on a mold of five, which not good for us. Um, go to game three. Uh, they keep seven. I'm like, oh, God damn it. So my seven is okay. It's too slow, I think, for my opinion. I forget what it was exactly. I think it was no one drop into wall wrist, but then and like a Patra, but with no Yogmoth. So I like I don't think I can keep this. I want to try to find a force. I want to try to find uh, the Haywire Might. So I molt and I go to six, and I think the six was like okay, but I think I can't remember if I keep six or if I go down to five trying to dig for. It. I think I keep six because I'm like if I go to five and find the force, it's gonna be so bad anyways. So I go to I just keep the six, and unfortunately, oh my god, they had the nuts. They <laughs> they go the ley line into the scion into uh, a subtlety to stop what I was playing into the uh, into a reprieve to stop my yog moth. I'm like all right, you got it. So unfortunately, I ended at five and three there. So I think that takes me out. Well, I guess I'm still in for the pro tour at that point, but I'm like, that's I'm not live for top eight anymore. I don't think. Um, so like, oh, man. like okay, all right, all right. That was that was the goal, right? Okay. Oh wait, this guy's X and three, maybe. Okay. So I guess if I had really good breakers, I could have made uh, top eight with at X and three. But I'm still I'm like, okay, you know, it's it's fine. Just we gotta win out. We just gotta win out from here. So. Go to game number, we go to the, the winning in. Here it is, the winning in. Oh, and I'm like, oh, come on. One time for the two time. Two time for the one time. Come on, we got to do this. So round number nine, this is the winning in for day two. Very excited. I, I was I was hyping myself up. I'm like, come on, we got to do this. Uh, it was sitting across from Amulet Titan. I'm like, finally, oh my goodness. Been trying to find this matchup all day. Because <laughs> uh, I am very confident in my Amulet Titan matchup. I think... Uh, I have, I, over time, I've had a very good win rate versus it. Uh, I feel very confident. I know what to do. I know what hands to look for. So and I see the Amulet Titan. I'm like, okay, nice. Still scary. You still, it's not a free, it's not a free W, okay? We still have to respect the deck. Um, so I feel, I, but I feel good. I feel go, good going into my last game here. Game number one, uh, they start, they open with the, with Saga. I think I had Haywire Mike. I forget if I have hay. I forget if I had haywire might in my opening hand or not, but I'm pretty sure I did. Or I drew into it, and then I was able to exile their thing. And I kept them off of the. Thi I kept them off of a, an amulet for a, a little bit, but then they drew into another one. So they, I'm, I'm setting up. I get Yogmoth into play, and then they're they're t doing their stuff, and then they play a one ring. I'm like, okay, and then I court for Hapatra. I get Hapatra, and then I draw into the. I have the young wolf in my hand. I play the young wolf. I'm, I'm drawing cards, drawing cards. And then I drew into the other court. I'll get a Zulu port. Get the Zulu port. And then I explain, okay, that this is gonna kill you. And my opponent's like, okay, yeah. So got hey, got the game one through the ring protection with the Zulu port. We're coming in, uh, getting those W's there. So then game two versus Amulet. Uh, this one was a little bit of a nail biter because I get Hapakra into play. I get Yogmoth, but then I don't draw into anything else. I don't draw. I never see another court. I never see another hate piece. And I'm like, oh. It's not looking too good. So they ha are they're stuck at four lands, and they have two amulets in play, and they have nothing else. And I think at this point, I just they had two dryads in play, and they had two dryads in play, a construct, and a grazer. And I had to use the last of my life to put counters on them, but and then proliferate because I didn't. I was out of. I only had one life. I took myself all the way down to one. Because I'm like, I just need to get the, this dried off the table just in case they draw into like a Valkut here or something scary. So I get both of them off the field. I get the, the construct off the field and I'm just like, okay, I have a cauldron in play and I'm just starting to buff my stuff. I'm like, buff, my, put a counter, proliferate, put a counter, proliferate. So I got, I had Hapatra. Uh, I'm buffing Hapatra. I have a Dried Arbor in play. I'm buffing the Dried Arbor. I'm, <laughs> Hapatra's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, dried Arbor's an 8-8 eight, eight, and I'm just swinging in. I'm like, I just need to end the game before they top deck what they need. And so I'm swinging in, swinging in. Uh, they go down for like, they have chump block with the token. They chump block with the, the Arboreal Grazer. And I'm just swinging, swinging. And I eventually, they draw for turn. And the, the next swing is lethal. They draw, they look at the cards. And they concede. I'm like, oh, yes. 
oh man it felt it felt so good to get in there for day two oh especially a one life a one life any top deck kills me there uh they had a, so what they had in hand they had four lands and they had like two red board wipes but they had, were missing a red mana that's why we killed the dryads there hey get those get those off the field <laughs> <laughs> so they, yeah they all they didn't had they didn't have the second red mana for the the storm's fury i think they had two of those in hand um and yeah so we we, we were able to just ah, dodge those real quick so ooh, yeah, that was game number that was the that was day one uh I ended at six and three could have been better uh talked about like what i think what i think i did wrong there what i think i did differently or could have done differently but i mean <laughs> there wasn't much i could have done against the domain zoo deck i think and then versus the Rhinos deck, uh, Rhinos, yeah, versus the Rhinos deck, I could have maybe mulled to six there in game three to maybe find something a bit more solid. And then Living End deck, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> it was it was pretty hard. Uh, so that yeah, that, that was my day one. And then going into day two, I'm like, okay, we just got Trophy Elite. We just got Trophy Elite. That's all we gotta do. Just win, just win five games, and we're good. We're all good to go, baby. I get matched into Merc Tide, and I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling good. I'm like, okay, first Merc Tide, finally, let's go. Feeling good. And I keep my they win the die roll. I keep my hand, my game, my game one hand on the strength of a endurance. So I drew that I have the one of endurance, but the rest of the hand is pretty mediocre. I think this was a mistake on my part. So my hand was. I think it was two lands, a dried arbor. Zulaport, Endurance, Board of Calling, and then Wall of Roots or Halfling. I think that was my hand. I think it was a one drop. I think I think it was a young wolf. So that hand, I'm keeping on the strength of endurance. And I, I did draw into the third land, so I didn't have to rely on Dried Arbor. But I was thinking I, I, I solely kept that hand on the strength of, of endurance and the cord eventually, right? But I know that they also played two subtleties in the main board because I saw their deck list. So, I mean, one versus two, right? They have a higher chance of having their, their subtlety. So, it was a little bit of a risky keep. Um, I try, I flashed it in at an, oppor at an opportune time when they tapped out, but they did have the subtlety. They, I put it back on top, but at that point, it was already too late. So, they end up getting game one. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's, like, that was a mistake on my part. I realized that. It's, okay. And so, going to the game two, the sideboarding, I think they have, a cursed to they have one cursed totem. They bring in some other hate pieces. Uh, I open my hand. I got turned to a grist. Feeling good. And I have cord, and I think the hand was really good. So uh, I get the, I play the halfling. I pass turn. And they play the land. Halfling lives. I'm like, oh. Uh, they pre ordain. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, here we go. Uh, and then I t play the grist. No subtlety. I'm like, okay, we're in there. Let's go. And then they uh, untap, and I play cursed totem on two. I'm like, okay, that's not that's not too good. So I didn't draw into a land. I think I had a Yog Moth. But I couldn't play it because I didn't have the Force Sword with my with my uh, blah, 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 with my halfling being no longer alive uh, in terms of mana. They they had no more powers. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. We just gotta beat down. It's beaten down. They have no creatures in play. I'm just beaten down. T turning things sideways. Hey, go insects. Go get them. Uh, go halfling. So I'm doing that. I think I do land a cauldron in play, and I'm just trying to keep them off of delirium as much as I can. I'm eating all their spells. Trying to, if they ever resolve a Merc Tide, I don't want them to get a big one. So just constantly up plusing Grist, trying to get it out of Unholy Heat range, and I'm successful in doing so. And I'm able to get through it. I never find the hate for the Cursed Totem, so I'm able to get there. Boom. Uh, just have the, the Draft Chaff beat down, the one ones. Felt really good. Um, then going into game three, I do keep a turn to Grist again. The hand was pretty solid overall. I felt like it was it was good. So I go turn one. They go turn one. Preordain. I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm, my halfling's not gonna die on my turn. I think they go turn one. Preordain. I, I think the pre, the halfling lives. So I play the halfling. Pass turn. They go to their turn. The ch the one of chalice again on turn two. I'm like, oh, okay, damn it. So the, uh, turn two grits off the table. But I think I draw the cauldron. I think. Um, I have to apologize. It was a it was a very long weekend. I'm trying to remember everything. I, w I wasn't just like writing everything down while I was playing the game. So I'm, I'm trying to remember everything as best I can. Um, I believe I'm able to stick a grist, and from there I'm just I'm just relying on grist. I'm like plus plus plus. Unfortunately, the cauldron's not doing much for me since there is a cursed totem in play. So I'm just trying to like plus to just get my creature count up. I'm just turning sideways again, but they 
excuse me, they get into a a spot where they flash in a they flash in a subtlety, I think just to have something on board. And then they tap out for a Merc Tide. I think the Merc Tide was a 5-5. Five five, because I was eating their things with the cauldron. Um and now I'm in a spot of trouble. I still have a way more creatures on board than they do. And I, my goal is like, I just need to kill. I need to get them down. Uh, they take, they bolt my grist so they can't, so I can't ultimate. So, uh, I like that, that, that line is off the table. So I'm just like, mm -mm, like thinking, uh, and I'm just like, I think I just need to swing here. Like I, I need to swing into two of their creatures. I think they tapped the subtle, they, they tapped subtlety to finish off the grist. So, cause they bolted and they flashed in the subtlety. So I'm like, okay, I just need to finish off. I just need to get in. They were they were super low. I got they were at like four, and I was just attacking in. I'm like attacking in, and then they go to three. I think I have two creatures left in play, and then they have the subtlety and they have the the merc tide, and then they crack the fetch to two. I'm like, okay, this is the, I have a chance. I have a chance, and I have a fetch in play to get a dried arbor. So they go to their turn. They draw a, they draw, ledger shredder. And they pre -or and a pre -or they had a preordain in hand, so they play Ledger Shredder, or I'm sorry, turn they do something. I they they whole they have like four cards in hand or something. So on my turn, I'm like <clears throat> I have a Bowmaster and a Shieldred. This is also a part where I think I made a misplay, think, looking back on it and reviewing my game. So here I know they have the counter spell, but I don't have enough mana to do Bowmaster plus Shieldred. So I'm like, well, I need to get the counter spell out of their hand. It might be likely that they have a second one. So I think I just have to like go for it and play the Shieldred here. So I throw out the Shieldred and they have the counter spell. So I'm like, okay, pass turn. I don't think I should have done that. What I think I should have done was pass the turn and Bowmaster on their turn, make them use the counter spell on their turn. And then if they don't have the second counter spell, then I can resolve a Shieldred and just pass because they didn't have Delirium. So I think that was probably the better line to take. My thinking was, I want to keep the Bowmaster in my hand because I have two spells, and they I know that they have a Ledger Shredder in play, so I can just like get in there. Or... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so they go to their turn, they drop, they preordain. Excuse me, I'm trying. Oh gosh, I'm forgetting a lot of things. I they they play the Ledger Shredder. No, no, no. They they play a spell and they preordain trigger Ledger Shredder. They draw a discard. They have no, no cards in hand. So they, they mill over at Brotherhood's End. And they resolve Preordain. They look at the top two cards. They tank for a little bit. They put one on top, put one on bottom. And they draw the one. And so I go to my turn. Uh, so I they have just like two lands untapped. And I'm like, okay. Bowmaster. And they think, 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 think. Like, okay, it resolves. I'm like, okay, Hapatra. Just can I trigger? I'm like, hey, can I figure? Hey, you got one? Can I figure over there? Uh, and then they tank. And then they have the lightning bolt, and they bolt the bowmaster. So, ah, it was it was really close. Uh, I wasn't even upset that I lost the game because the the guy was super nice. First of all, and second, I think the game all all three games were very very fun. I had a great time playing them. But yeah, I think that was the mistake I made in game one and in game three was was the first the mulligan decision in game one, and then that the last play at the end there. I mean, you could I don't you can never know that they have like. Like I'm predicting, they have two counter spells, right? But if they do, I just lose the game anyway. So, but I think definitely playing the Bowmasters on their turn was probably the correct play. So, so then going into game, what is this here? That was Murktide. Yeah. So then num round number eleven uh, versus Coffers. Uh, first time I faced Coffers the whole tournament. Um, in game one, I think I'm just able to just like get them. They just ran out of resources really quickly, and I was just able to win through a Grist. Uh, I think. Yeah, what I did is I, I had a Grist and I had a Cauldron and I just was able to put multiple counters on my things and I proliferated four times on my turn and I ulted Grist three times to kill them. So that was fun. <laughs> and then in game number two, they're able to uh, stick a Shieldred, uh, Damnation like once or twice and then get the Shieldred back with the one ring. Uh, they, got, they got a shoulder back with the Takanuma, and then they got a one ring. So that game, I, I was not able to come back from, unfortunately. So I got that game. And then game three, it was really good back and forth, good back and forth. Uh, and I think they, they do have a Cursed Totem in play. Yeah, they, they get a card, and they put Cursed Totem into play. And they, I think they have, like, one card in hand or no cards in hand. 
And I know they have one Emrakul in the board, so I'm keeping an eye on their graveyard the entire time. I've never able to find... I have... Uh, I milled over both of my Fulbinator mages. Thank you, Gris, by the way. Thank you for that. Uh, so, and I never was able to find a Cauldron. So, I'm just on the beatdown plan. I have the, the Curse Tournament play. I'm, I'm just... I'm turning stuff sideways. Here we go. So, they pass the turn... And I'm thinking I, I can I can use the, the I have a cord in my hand. I'm like, I can use this cord to get Reclamation Sage. I can take out the totem. But that's not going to stop this Emrakul if that's what they if that's what their last card in hand is. And I'm like, hmm. Okay, and I get the and they uh they end of uh, before they end the turn, they profane tutor. They put profane tutor on two. I'm like, okay. And I know I caught them. I did catch them. They were looking at their graveyard, they're like counting. And I know, hey, I, I look at my graveyard too when I have a Griston play. So I, I figured, okay, last card might be Emrakul. So they have Profane Tutor and they have one card in hand. So I'm like, oh shit, okay. Uh, I'm, instead of end step, instead of going to end step and doing a, excuse me, instead of doing a Rex Age here, I'm going to do a, an Endurance. I'm going to get them off from their mana. Hopefully the, 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 they ha don't have enough mana to do it. So I... Go for three, they set a resolves, endurance, and then like look at the graveyard for a little bit. Like, oh. So I think I got them. So then go to my turn, turn them sideways. They have a shielded in play. Um, they have to block my endurance because it's I think it's big enough to trade with the shielded at that point. I just turn sideways. They go down, they draw a card, goes to one, pass turn to me, turn sideways again, ultimate grist, and we got there. Got them. the last card in hand was a land, and the profane tutor, they told me it was going to get the Emrakul. But they, they, I think they had enough mana to cast it already. So I'm like, okay, no, it, it was, it, it didn't matter. I think they, they played a land or two, so maybe they drew into the land that would have, maybe they had enough at that point to cast it. But I got a little bit, of, a little bit of a read there, so that was nice, uh, nice. So I'm like, okay, got that one. And then round number twelve, again, I match it to my teammate, my boy Carlo. He's on blue white control. I, I, I gotta be honest with you. I'm sorry, Carlo. <laughs> it was not close. <laughs> I apologize. It was. Um, I had a very, very, I had a very good hand that lined up with, against what he was doing. I had, uh, I drew a lot of answers to the the uh, ley line. I had like a Basaju in my hand that I was holding the whole time just in case he hit for a ley line. Um, yeah, it was just unfortunate that we got matched up into each other. I got the game 2-0. Uh, this always sucks to to hit your teammate in these big events, like I said before, but it happens. So I'm like, I'm not going to let you down. Don't worry. I'm going to win out. And I let him down immediately. <laughs> I let him down immediately. Because I matched it. Round 13, living end, baby. Whew. So it was hard for me to win this one. And it was close games. In game uh, game number two, I don't want to go to game number one yet. Game number two, I get there just by, um, I think just by swinging. Or I think I combo with uh, Zulaport. Something like that. Game number one. They're on the play. They won the die roll. So it's already hard. I actually get this really nice setup. So I have a cauldron and I have a grist, an early grist. So I'm like, okay, that's, I think this is the best it's going to get versus versus game one uh, living in besides the endurance, right? So I, I'm i able to resolve the, the cauldron because of the halfling. And then I have resolved the grist. Or I, I do the grist first, right? Because, you know, you turn two. So I get the grist in play. It says resolves. Like, awesome. Uh, I plus, nothing happens. Uh, I don't mill over anything relevant. So then, go to their turn. They, they already cycled a bunch. They living end. I swap things out. I get a my young wolf. Come, I had a young wolf in play. Young wolf comes back, and then they uh, they have a bunch of creatures in play. No grief or anything, so that's good. And then they pass turn to me. And no, no um, curator either. So they pass turn to me. I'm like, okay. I have a Zula port in my hand. I have another. I do have a. I have a wolf in my hand. The issue is I'm at one life. Oh, this is, yeah, this, sorry, this is after a, I took a swing. I, I took a hit, and I can't block. If I want a chance at winning the game, I cannot block here because I have a young wolf in play with a counter on it. So I take 16 down to 1. I was at 17. And I'm like, okay, I need a miracle. I need something here. So I plus on Grist. I mill over Yawgmoth. I'm thinking, I, I, I take like t five, ten minutes. I don't, I don't take ten. I take like five to eight minutes. I'm like thinking, I'm like, can I win here? Because I have a young wolf in my hand and I have a Zulaport, but I don't ha I'm missing the land drop. 
plus my young wolf has two counters on it because I had to put I had to exile the halfling to play the other to play the grist because I drew into another grist I think and then I yeah I, that's what happened I had I had to exile the halfling to play the grist so I'm like oh man this is it's not looking too good but I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm like oh, is there any way that I can like reset the one young wolf and like try to try to win here so I play the Zulaport. And I exile the Yawgmoth, and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my god, what can I do here? I could play the other young wolf, which, I, I mean, I do. I play the other young wolf, and I'm like, okay. But but I can't reset it. I need, I need like, Dryad Arbor at this point. I need some, I need, like, uh, I need either Dryad Arbor or Endurance to reset the final counter on the thing. So I'm, like, thinking, thinking, I'm like, reset, I sack the wolf, reset, I draw nothing, thinking, thinking, thinking. And then eventually I'm like, no, I can't do it. So, but it was it was really close. Oh my gosh, it was so close. Also, oh yeah, I was at one. I had to down take on the grist to reset to go up to two. That's what I had to do. Sorry, I'm sorry if I'm I'm missing details. There's a it's, it's like, I'm trying to remember everything I can, but I, I am missing some details, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, that they 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 end up getting a game one. I get game two. Game three, they had they in game two and game three they had leyline of the void in play both times. So it was already hard for me. Like I'm not getting any value from attacking creatures or from milling stuff with grist. I'm able to get the leyline out of the way with the haywire might and like get some creatures into play. Uh, they they have a, a river winder, a street wraith, and a Charlotte's agent in play. I go to my turn and I have a endurance and I have a young wolf. I think. Or I have another creature with a counter on it, and I have under the cauldron, under my cauldron, I have a gilded goose, and I have mana to make a food, eat a food. So I'm thinking they're at six, I'm at three. I'm like, okay, I need to swing in here with the endurance. So that's a four five, so I can eat their things to trade with the river winder. So I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, okay, what do I do here? And I can leave. The, I, oh, I was orc army token. That's what it was. I can leave my orc army token back to make a food and eat the food. Um, and I'm like, okay, let's do that. So I swing in with my endurance. They, their other two creatures were tapped out, so they had to block with the um, the shardless agent. So they block with the shardless agent. I'm like, great, cool, pass turn. And they're like tanking. They're like, they, I think they they don't see the gilded goose under the cauldron. I I'm not trying to hide it or anything. I have it right there, right? But they just don't realize it. So they're like looking, 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 and they're like, like trying to realize what I'm trying to think, what, uh, trying to find out what I'm doing because they think that I'm just dead at three life. But then they see the guilt, they see the goose, and they're like, oh, okay. And they go to their turn, and then they they draw a card for turn, they're thinking, and then they they like, okay, bounce your token with the with the uh, brazen borrower. I'm like, oh, come on. And he's like, oh, I just grew and so I'm thinking like I could have cracked the I could make a food, crack the food, but I only had, that was my only creature in play. I go to six, but then I take eight from the the crack back. So yeah, they got me with that. I but I needed to attack there if I wanted to have a chance at winning the game with endurance. Because if um, if they don't have anything there and I attack, and I, if if they don't have anything there, I'm able to block, make a food, eat a food, then they're just dead on the crackback, right? So because my my endurance was a, a five power, and I, I could eat something in the yard, get it to six, and they were at six. So that's a line that I took. I didn't have anything else in hand. I had a yog moth, but I wasn't going to do anything uh, with my board state, and they, uh, I know that they had. I assume that they had a subtlety in hand, which they did. They showed me their hand after the game. They had two subtlety force negations. So I was like, "What am I gonna do? What, what am I gonna do against that?" So it was it was rough, uh, but I mean, good games, good good close games at least. It wasn't like a complete blowout, but it was still hard, you know. And last game, I'm like, okay, I'm X at five at this point. Unfortunately, uh, I'm out of prizey. It's fine, you know. It's still good. I'm still having a great time. So then, last round, uh, I go up against Mono Blue Merfolk. Uh, this one was also fun. Uh, well, not for me. <laughs> uh, what happened was my opponent. So my opponent has like Lord Lord uh, Spellyun, and I have Grist Cauldron, and I milled over a Grist with uh, the the Grist Plus, and I made another. I exiled it with the Cauldron. I made in more tokens, and I milled over a Yogmoth. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm feeling great. I'm like, oh, okay, go, your turn. Go ahead. Uh, so I, I'm I feel a little cocky. Um, I'm not, well, not cocky, but I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. So, pass turn to them, and they draw a card, and they, oh no, they end step Tidebinder, my Bowmasters. Or no, they main phase Tidebinder, my Bowmasters. Yeah. 
they so they go to their turn they they flash in the tide binder with the vial and they turn off my bowmaster and i was kind of counting on my bowmaster when they attack with his fail unit because it's, it's not a may and they i would have pinged them for one and they made a blocker so they tap my bowmaster and then i also can't make the blocker so i'm like okay taking a lot of damage here they have two lords in play i shrunk the spell yun um because i think i was able to get yogmoth under the cauldron that turn or like a previous turn because i was i was shrinking their stuff so the spell yun was at three power but everything else was, was really buff so they they're like thinking thinking they activate their mutable and they swing uh and i'm like okay uh how much is this and they, we're counting up it's like it's 12 damage i'm at 17 i'm like okay that's fine. Oh, he's like, oh, I have a, I have a trigger. Like, yeah, we we haven't we hadn't moved to damage yet. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You draw a card. So he draws a card, and then he's thinking, and then he flashes in the Flash Lord, the Flash Merfolk Lord, and he's like, okay, we need to do the damage, damage again. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so we add it all up, and I would be at sixteen, at sixteen damage, and I'm at seventeen, and I'm like, okay, uh, I'll go to one, and I wasn't feeling uh, so at that point i'm like well shoot i i can't believe i'm gonna lose this game <laughs> but i like i wasn't completely dead because i had a zulu port in my hand and i had a grist on the field so i'm like well i could sack something and you know at least gain a life maybe and go from there um and then i go to my turn and i draw strangle root geist and i'm like i think i just win and my opponent has he has tapped out he has no cards in hand and i'm like i'm gonna play zulu port he's like okay i'll play strangle root geist he's like okay I'm going to use the real Grist to sack Stranger Root Geist to target your Spale Yun, which is indestructible. I don't care. I just want the trigger. I'm like, I'm going to go up to two. He's like, okay. And now my, I have a Grist under the cauldron. I have a Yogwath under the cauldron. So I'm like, I'm going to plus my Stranger Root, make a token, sack it, do it, like do the loop, and then I'm going to drain you. He's like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so that was a pretty sick line. Uh, managed to Stranger Root coming in clutch there. I would, I would have been able to draw a few more cards there because I had multiple... Um, wrist pluses I w I'm, like i wasn't <clears throat> i wasn't totally dead but you know it was like it was all good so we got that one in two oh and then that was a tournament that was my rc run i wish i could have done better obviously you know the goal was to win the whole thing the goal was to go to the pt right but you know still a great day i was super stoked to make day two i was super fun i had a, i was super fun having a great time with all my friends you know supporting them going out to dinner uh and it was, it was a great time all around but so at the end, I mentioned at the beginning, I wanted to say something here. So at the beginning, so it was great. This whole this whole tournament thing. I love going to RCs. I love going to magic events. I have a great time. I, I always do. I think it's awesome. But this time was different because this time was not. It was well, not only the, the first time I made day two, which was awesome in the format that I care the most about. By the way, <laughs> the, my favorite format, best format, no, not the best format. Whatever your opinion, it's okay, right? My favorite format. Um, this time was different because at this point I've gained, I've garnished a little bit of a following. You know, got got a few got a few people checking out my streams, checking out my videos. I appreciate all of you, by the way. Um, but going into Denver and Colorado, I had a few people message me. Uh, I've done I was doing coaching before uh, before the tournament for other people. I was helping people with sideboard guides. I was helping people with matchups and stuff like that. And so I knew going into Colorado, I was going to have a few people come up to me and be like, hey, you know, like I, we were talking online. So I was thinking maybe, you know, like three, like four people and, some, and the boys in Discord. Hey, meet up. we were going to meet up. So, we were, yeah, we were all going to meet up. We had this whole thing. Um, but I, th I didn't think it was going to be as many people as it was. It was like 30 something people or more 30 or more people all came up to me and were like, Oh dude, are you me? I'm like, what? Yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> oh man. It was just, it was so surreal. I, I like, cause I've been, I mean, I've been to the other tournaments. I've been to, I went to Atlanta. I went to, I went to like all the other places, but I didn't really have that much of a following back then. I, I in Atlanta, I, there was a few people, there were a few people who said hi. There was like two or three who came up to me like, Oh, are you me? I'm like, Oh, that was the first time. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like three people like that. That was even, even having one person do that to me was, was super cool. But this time, like having having like thirty plus people, 
especially like the one the ones that message the ones that messaged me like i knew the ones that messaged me they're super super cool guy all, all of you that i met all of you that i met were so nice so nice super cool to talk to i had a super fun time you know like i, I played with some of you you know it was, it was super fun just talking through meeting you guys for the first time talking about decks talking about like sideboard strategies talking about all oh, the new ley line deck oh my god <laughs> it was it was just so fun it was it was so so much fun and i, I just i never expected to to get that kind of response from from going to to RCs or going to tournaments, you know, I'm always I'm I'm a pretty friendly guy, you know. I, I like talking to people, you know. I'm I'm I always do like talking to new people, but it was just felt it just felt so good to have people come up to me and be like, oh, you know, I I love your content, I watch your videos, I watch your stream, you know, it's awesome. I love what you do. It was that's what made my whole weekend. That's what that's not the the RC, you know, traveling to to Colorado for the first time, seeing so, you snow, know, you know, that was all. That was all great, but the thing that made my whole weekend was just having having all of you guys that I met come up to me and you know shake my hand and be and excited to meet me and I I signed some cards too. So people wanted me to sign their yacht boss. I'm like, wow, I don't I don't know I don't know how to sign meet. I, they they wanted me to sign my real name, which I'm totally fine with, but which was good because I know I know how to do that one. <laughs> but oh man, it was it was it was just so great. So at the end of the video here, I just want to I really want to thank all of you i always i always say it at the end of every video and stream I, that i appreciate all you guys but i truly do i truly appreciate each and every one of you and i thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and this space to be who i am and you know meet all of you wonderful people and play this beautiful game of magic that we all play together so thank you guys for all that thank you for giving me that opportunity to experience that but yeah, that's just what I wanted to touch on. Um, this video is running a bit long. I did not. Uh, I apologize. I know I like to extrapolate. I like to. Uh, I like to have long-winded conversations, uh, and I apologize for that. I could. I could talk for hours about Yogmoth. Know, you guys know that. You know. You know that. Um, so I'll, I'll try to end it. I'll, I'm going to end it here. That was just. That was my run. Uh, I had a great time. Met awesome people again. You know, signed signed Yogmoth cards. Like wow, that, was, that, was, that was so cool. Um, and I'm very happy. I'm, I'm just very happy right now. So thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, and we're not done. Uh, oh, hold on. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phones in either. Okay. Why did no one tell me that this RC does not queue for a modern PT? Why did no one tell me that? I was so upset. I felt better for not making the PT because I'm like, okay, I'm not missing out on modern at least. <laughs> But why is it going to standard, dude? Oh my god. So, but apparently, the next one, the standard one for next season, that one's going to a modern PT. So you already know, we're going to be grinding hard for that one. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, I'm very excited, very look looking forward to that. So, no, but now I have some free time. So, that's not till May. I'm already queued. I'm already, I got, I went... I was a toxic gamer, okay? I, I queued with toxic. I'm already good. But standard's going to be completely different because there's going to be a new set coming out in April. So there's not really any point to me playing standard because usually, at least so far, every standard set has been pretty impactful on the mat on the meta. So I think I'm just going to wait and see how the meta game plays out, how things play out. I might try a few decks here or there. There's one with the with this new Sphinx card that looks crazy. Um, it's like that's like the one that, that collects evidence. You may pay, you may collect evidence ten instead of paying mana cost for spells. I thought that that one looks really cool. So we'll see we'll see what happens. But all right, and I'm ending the video for real now. Okay, <laughs> I want to thank each and every one of you for like, comment, subscribing, everything. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I hope all of you have a nice and wonderful day. And I will see you next time I see you. Okay. <laughs>